little introduction about Mr. Biplob. Mr. Biplob has 35 years of experience in the exploration and mining industry through career in Rio Tinto, Geological Survey of India, and Oil and Natural Gas Corporation. He is a co-founder of GeoVale Services, which has been one of the most active consulting team in the mineral and water domain in India and other parts of the world since 2013. His team has executed a number of exploration projects, management resource and resource evaluation projects for coal in Indonesia, India, and iron ore, India, Oman, Malaysia, and man for manganese, India, Philippines, and industrial mineral, India, and Africa. Over to you, Biplop, sir. And I welcome you to this webinar. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Mukesh Ji. Uh, good afternoon to all of you, um, wherever you are. Um, uh, it's wonderful to be uh, again uh, a panelist here. Um, this is about underground uh, uh, underground mining. Uh, the topic says, uh, uh, although Mukesh sir, you uh, you have already set the tone. Uh, probably there is a scope for exploration as well uh, when you carry when we uh, intend to carry out underground mining um, in in the framework of industry uh, 4.0. Uh, I'll try to um, I'll try to give my views. Uh, your poll also set set the tone, Monica. Um, people feel that it's the technology which is the biggest hamper in deep seated mineral exploration in India. Uh, people also feel almost almost equal number feel, feel government interference and clearance, uh, and I believe both these factors are very very critical factors uh, uh, as far as underground as far as deep seated mineral exploration in India is concerned. Now, um, um, since uh, so this will be a very high level, I know that this is a uh, this is an audience which has uh, sort of a different. Uh, 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 which are from different domains. I'll keep it at a, at a high level only, uh, not go into, a, a, into great details of the te technical details of exploration. Uh, so, um, uh, well, since MMDR 2015, as Mukesh has already said, and, there, and thereafter at NMP 2019, India has started talking about its deep seated mineral exploration requirements. Now, the big premise uh, is that India has potentially explored most of its shallow mineral deposits. Hence, only deep-seated mineral deposits are a likely critical targets for mineral exploration. Now, we will test the veracity of this hypothesis here. Uh, it sort of means that uh, there is all the all the shallow mineral deposits have been already explored, found out. Um, okay, so uh, uh, I just said only ten percent uh, 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 has been explored. But, the but some part of the government says that all the shallow mineral deposits have been explored. That's why we need to look for only deep seated mineral, mineral exploration. So we will look at what deep seated mineral exploration means, uh, and uh, also we'll look at what does it take to carry out uh, such exploration. Now, there is absolutely no established definition of deep seated mineralization, and as uh, you pointed out, sir, uh, uh, MOM considers uh, uh, deposits occurring at depths of greater than. 300 meters at deep seated, just for semantics, nothing more. Now, should we consider all underground mining proposition for deep seated mineralization? Again, uh, watching from, again, switching from an open pit to underground would entirely be the function of mineralization style and uh, economics. Uh, uh, that's why we have Bingham Canyon in Utah, in the Rockies, uh, which is an open pit mine at 1200 meters depth. Uh, Balanchkan, which is a similar porphyry, albeit of a different age. Porphyry copper uh, is going for underground exploitation at uh, from, from 300 to 600 meters depth after open pitting um, uh, for about 150 to 170 uh, 150 170 meters from the surface. Now, our understanding the generic mineral systems do not suggest that uh, there is a real natural cutoff at, or depth control at which nature would start providing us bountiful of resources. Now. Petroleum is uh, just is an exception, though. We are not talking about that here. Uh, there are certainly deposits, uh, especially supergene deposits, which have uh, not been capped because of subsequent geological events that are most likely to bottom up, actually. Uh, they occur near surface and would bottom out. So the illustrations would include, for example, the bauxite deposits in the eastern or western ghats, or the BIF hosted uh, hematitic iron ore in the horseshoe or horseshoe belt of Baladilla or Bellary Hospital or, uh, or Goa, since the regions, 
or the barrett manganese quartzite, the super gene manganese enrichment uh, uh, in the horseshoe belt, or the Bali Villas formation, Dharmar, Dharmar formation, Dharmar, Creton, uh, or those of Goa. Now, on the other side, uh, we have the hydrothermal deposits, so from granitic materials which could go up to kilometers depth in, ge in, a, geological, in a geologic structure. Now, thermal resetting due to igneous intrusion or tectonic deformation too can occur at different depths uh, to become causative for deep-seated, deeper level mineralization. Uh, but for us explorers, uh, those fossilized thermal tectonic zones with uh, uh, with its mineralization, do not get uh, do not get exhumed or get capped by subsequent uh, geological uh, do get exhumed actually by subsequent geological events. Now, this, most of the low style or share hosted gold deposits like Kolar or Hati or Jonagiri or Ganajur and the other potential greenstone belt hosted uh, deposits, uh, gold deposits, Tharwar, Pastor, or Singboom Kretom can extend down to great depths. Uh, baseball deposits too can extend down to mere surface to great depths. Um, diamond hosted kimberlites can extend to great depths, and many igneous source deposits could occur at significant depths. Um, but the rule of the game is to try and recognize most of the mineralization signatures at near surface at an early stage of exploration before carrying out any depth prognostication. Now, subsequent geological events um, can, can actually cap a deposit, cover a deposit with a capping, uh, and uh, such caps could be of various thicknesses. Now, Western Australia, supergene regular capping could be over 100 meter thick, um, uh, how which allow both geochemical and geophysical vectors for exploration. The Fort Alacon diamond deposits in Saskatchewan in Canada occurs over a glacial tail cover of more than 150 meters and allows only geophysical vector uh, for a non-invasive prognosis. Now in India too, we have uh, 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 we have parts of capped domains such as Deccan Trap or Protozoical Gondwana sedimentary covers or the Thar Desert. Uh, or peripheral regions of Indo-Gangetic and Libyan cover, which could uh, potentially host mineral deposits. Um, the big um, fact is that most of these, with exceptions like uh, Pachami coal field or the shallower parts of Barme Potash or Rio Pinto's discovery of Kimberlites below cap cover in Chhattisgarh or Madhya Pradesh, have actually remained completely unexplored to date. So I don't believe, again, that exploration has been actually carried out uh, as. Uh, uh, um, uh, Mukesh Kumar Sahib just pointed out. Because if we want to target, if we want to target deep seated deposits, um, we have two routes to adopt. A route A would be to explore for deposit signatures from surface uh, downwards, uh, and then could be a route B to explore for deposit signatures below the cover routes. Uh, so there could be an exceptional route C two, where providence, uh, God has decided to emplace a mineral deposit in complete isolation at depth without any discernible surface signature. Uh, uh, Olympic Dam probably uh, and IUCG style mineralization could be such an exception. So what could be India's strategy to explore for deep-seated minerals? Now, to me, India has the best chance of finding its deep-seated deposits through Route A, meaning that we need to look for depth extensions of near-surface mineral occurrences. So again, find more near-surface deposits or occurrences and look for their depth extension through interpretation of geology, structure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now that should be a priority one. Priority two could be looking for mineral deposits through Route B, that is below the capping. Now, um, uh, again, in such situations, we need to define the mineral systems uh, and look for vectors which can then be used for exploration. Now, let us see some excellent illustrations of Route A from, uh, uh, of use of Route A uh, from India, that is exploration deeper seated deposit, uh, which are depth extension of shallow deposits. Uh, our legacy of Kolar Goldfield uh, that has demonstrated that relentless pursuit of deeper extensions of the deposit. That's a fascinating example. Uh, and in our recent times, uh, uh, again mentioned earlier, uh, Hindustan Zinc Limited, we are going to hear Vinod Kumarji for sure. Uh, Post 2003 acquisition uh, by Vedanta has demonstrated a value created through brownfield exploration by almost trebling its geological resource at Rampura, which are now world's largest, I believe. And now, and also converting Sindhis Akur into a world class tier one lead zinc silver deposit. Now, we, I understand you are planning to go ahead with a similar strategy for other, your other assets, Virat Kumarji. So, HCL has now decided to extend Malanchkan into underground development from 300 to 600 meters. So HCL's other mines too have significant brownfield uh, potential for additional resources. Hati uh, currently producing just one to one and a half tons of gold per year. 
has great potential for debt extension. Uh, Mukesh Kwaji mentioned Moil, uh, UCL2, uh, all these, all they have, all of their assets have brown free, have brown free deep, deeper extension potential. I would point out something here. It's noteworthy that all these government PSUs, Hindustan Copper, Hindustan uh, Hathi Gold Mines, Moil, UCL, have near monopolistic dominance over large asset base of the, of the commodities. And all these, and in all these commodities, India has a significant input to them. Are we going somewhere wrong? Now, as far as let's get back to it. As far as route pay for filing deep seated mineralization is concerned, a significantly larger potential exists in the greenfield exploration arena in India. Uh, we've already talked about, uh, talked about that. Now, um, to me, uh, after having been part of uh, top level exploration teams and projects in many parts of the world, I strongly believe that India is one of the few last unexplored regions in this planet. 90% uh, uh, of our obvious geological potential. Now, Mukesh Kumar Sahib, you've said uh, only five points, uh, only 0.5 million square kilometer. In, uh, for us, it's 2 million square kilometers, four times that, which is our obvious geological potential, is grossly unexplored. Because we need to prioritize investigations for our shallow deposits before we start focusing on their depth extension. Now, Route B, explosion potential below capping stew has excellent untapped potential in India. So, for example, in Norilsk uh, uh, style chrome nickel deposit is possible below Deccan trap. Uh, coal is possible below Gondwana extensions, uh, similar to what we see below Raj Mahals in West Bengal in the Pachami field. field. Potash deposits with solution mining uh, potential is uh, possible in the downstream, downthrown western block with the Barway Basin below Thar. Uh, diamond deposits are also possible below upper Indians and canoe sediments. Rio Tinto, my our team just uh, uh, showed that. Uh, there are, these are just a few illustrations uh, to indicate that we haven't even attempted to explore some of these excellent deep seated mineral potential. So, where are the technology gaps with the deep seated mineral uh, targeting? Most of our non uh, bulk mineral targets have been based on closeology or brownfield approach around the old working and looking for extensions. How the next phase of mineral targeting would require a more detailed definition of a mineral systems. Now we have spectacular geological, structural, geochemical, and potential field radiometric and geophysical data collected by GSIS, world-class, absolutely, I must tell you. Um, I'm in sort of awe of the data collected by GSI and the capabilities of capability of doing so. Uh, um, and, and more is being collected, I must tell you. Probably we now need an emphasis on collection of many, many more geochronological data. That's missing. We need age data. As Australian geoscience has been showcasing in their project Uncover, which they are also collaborating, which they are doing in Australia, as also collaborating with GSI here in India. We need to integrate all these regional and available mineralization data sets to develop a better definition of mineral systems in the framework of crustal uh, events. Now, there are many innovations happening towards creation of new explosion tools. Uh, and some of those have been, uh, I mean, we have already just mentioned some of those uh, 3D, 3D tomography or uh, use of artificial intelligence uh, in large data analytics, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, these explosion tools range from predictive mapping through high resolution remote sensing data sets, from multispectral to hyperspectral and gradimetric aerogeophysical data acquisition, potential field geophysics. Drone geophysics will be invoked soon for detailed exploration in your methods of geochemical sample processing. Um, Date, new methods of data collection analysis of electrical and electromagnetic field, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Drilling, as we're collecting more and more of high resolution data, it's again, software capabilities are, are showing remarkable equip, uh, improvements. Again, I'm sure Vinod Kumarji will probably mention about this. HZL has pioneered the use of many of these, these uh, uh, tools illustrated through, the, through their brownfield expression results of both Rampur Agrochans in this current process. Then you have used directional drilling, download geophysics, and automated logging. We are aware of that uh, to interpret your massive data sets uh, to excellent results. Now, Dr. Dev Rajan, uh, who is now an uh, expression head of uh, our team uh, in Jivale, and his team collected oriented drill cores. Again, a novelty in Indian exploration scene to map out gold bearing shear zones at great depths. In Jonagin to uh, Jonagin. Sir. 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 Sorry to interrupt, sir. So you would need to conclude in one minute, sir. Sure, absolutely, Monica. So we are to fund the team, carried out interpretation of micro diamond fusion results and innovative geostatistical tools to assess the diamond resources of bundle deposits to more than half a kilometer of the surface. Let me get to conclusion straight away, as you suggested, to Monica. 
So India's strategy for strategy and goals for deep seed and mineral targeting should be simple. And this is my four step mantra for this. A, reverse the current lack of investments in the greenfield exploration, mineral exploration in the country, encourage and statutorily ensure and compel asset holders for brownfield exploration of potential deep source mineralization of their assets. Now open up GSI's entire digital baseline database for global explorers to evaluate while creating a globally competitive mineral investment code for extensive domestic and international investment in India's mineral exploration. Allow freedom for area selection for greenfield exploration in any part of OGP after blocking out the no go areas. Number three, remove evidence of mineral content rule from very specific, remove evidence of mineral content rule from MNBR 2015 and allow mineral assets to be carved in a way to enable brownfield exploration as well. And number four, GSI and MOM must either facilitate private exploration investments or themselves carry out exploration under various cover strategy to unravel the deep seated mineral, expo mineral exploration potential. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Biplop, sir, uh, for uh, explaining uh, so deeply about brownfield and greenfield uh, projects. And uh, technically, yes, uh, Hershey and uh, Sanjeev ji will take it over. Uh, now, uh, before moving on to our next panelist, uh, audience, let's have another poll. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, we have a new question on your screen. Where do you see Indian mining and exploration industry stands in adopting industry 4.0? Audience, please vote. Where do you see Indian mining and exploration industry stands in adopting industry 4.0? Your 